This book came for you to connect to Allah directly. We know that for a fact because when you stand in salah, you're supposed to recite, when you're standing, you're supposed to recite Qur'an. And you're supposed to pay attention to the Qur'an you're reciting. That in and of itself is explicit proof that there's no scholar between you and Allah. There's no mufassir between you and Allah. There is no, no someone more knowledgeable between you and Allah interpreting it for you. It's just you, the words of Allah and Allah. That's it. That's the connection between you and Allah. It's the rope that connects you to Allah directly, the Qur'an. But what has become your relationship and my relationship with the Qur'an? Do we actually open it to find what Allah is saying to me personally? And you could say, I don't know Arabic, I only have a translation, fine. Okay, you only have a translation. And maybe you should seek the answer even in that translation. And you don't understand what Allah is saying. Well, if you don't get what He's saying, come over and ask after Jummah. Hey, I was reading this, I didn't get it. What's that about? Just ask. Ask somebody who doesn't, well, maybe who's studying more than I do. And I'm not saying I have the answers. But I'm saying you will find, Allah will gift you people in your life that might know the answer better than you can figure it out. But if you don't open Allah's book, and you don't seek to ask those questions, and you don't come to it with one attitude, you're not opening the Qur'an to figure everything out, you're not opening the Qur'an to criticize it, you're not opening the Qur'an to become a scholar, or to quote it at somebody else, or to win an argument, you're opening Allah's book because you want a direct connection with Him, and you let rather He speak for Himself. You would rather He speak for Himself than somebody else speak for Him. You understand? And you don't tell yourself, well, I'm not a scholar, I'm not a this, I'm not a that. Listen, I, I've said this a thousand times, I'll say it again. There were plenty of occasions in which, you, you know, for the vast majority of the Sahaba, they were not students. The vast majority of them that carried the Qur'an were not students. A handful of them were students. Most of them just knew the word of Allah and they contemplated it. That's it. That's, that was their connection with Allah's book. That's the early history of Islam. One of the most remarkable places in the Qur'an is Surah Al-Ahqaf. The Prophet was leaving Taif. He was reciting some Qur'an. Qur'an came to him. And he was reciting some Qur'an. And the, you know that the jinns are invisible, right? The jinns are invisible. Some jinns were passing by. They heard the Qur'an. And they just stopped in their tracks. And they kept listening. And now we don't know any of this because we don't see the jinn. The Prophet doesn't see the jinn. And they listened, and then they spoke about the Qur'an. They had this impression of what they just heard. And that impression was so powerful, Allah made it part of the Qur'an. It's in Surah Al-Ahqaf. What, what ijazah did those jinn receive? What, what university did they study from? What grammar did they learn? They just heard the message of Allah and they said, إِنَّا سَمِعْنَا كِتَابًا أُنزِلَ مِنْ بَعْدِ مُوسَى يَهْدِي إِلَى الْحَقِّ وَإِلَى طَرِيقِ مُسْتَقِيمٍ We heard a book so long after the book that was given to Musa. It seems to be guiding to the truth, to a straight path. And those words themselves, in the Qur'an, in the Qur'an itself. In other words, don't let some people tell you that unless you have degrees in Islamic studies, you should not be opening this book. This book, Allah asked all of humanity to open it. All of humanity, Muslims and non-Muslims. How are Muslims saying they can't open it? How in the world? And then the, if they do open it, just open it to recite it for every letter will give you 10 good deeds, but don't look at the meaning. Don't look at the meaning because you'll get confused. You're told, don't look at the meaning, you'll get confused. Seriously? This one book came to get rid of all confusion. And now you say, don't look at this book because you'll get confused. The irony of these attitudes that we have been fed, unfortunately we've been fed, and I don't dismiss the value of scholarship. I don't dismiss the value of studying tafsir. But first and foremost, your relationship with Allah is not an academic relationship. It's not a, it's not a mental exercise. First and foremost, مَوْعِظَةٌ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ A counsel that came to you from your master, advice. Allah calls the entire Qur'an just advice. All of it is just advice. So you know what you do? Whatever you're reading, Maybe you don't see the advice directly. Alif, Lam, Meem. I don't know what that means, but I know one thing, there's some advice in it. I know one thing, there's some advice in this. How could this be advice? Let me ask. If I can't figure it out, let me find out. Whatever you're reading is going to be in one way or the other advice for you. And you and I are constantly in need of advice. And there's no better advice than someone who truly, truly loves you. You know, when you need advice, you don't go to people you know they have something against you. When you need advice, you don't go to people you can't trust. When you need advice, you go to someone who knows they've got your back, no matter what. They're not going to judge you. 
You can tell them anything and they can be, you can be open with them and they'll give you the best advice. You trust their wisdom, you trust their counsel, you trust their confidentiality, you trust that they're looking out for you, you trust that they don't have anything against you. These are your prerequisites before you ask somebody advice. And sometimes you wrong, ask the wrong person advice and you say, I'm never going to ask that person advice again. Nobody will give you better advice than Allah. And that will never happen if you don't personally make that journey, personally make the effort to open this book. The month of Ramadan is coming, and the reason I iterated this is that you personally have to now open this book.